Spirit. <coughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a lovely Friday evening. Well, at least for where, where I am. I know it's a it's a Friday morning in the West there or wherever you are. Basically, wherever we are, it's a Friday, right? So yeah, um, I want to continue single Bassa for Sumeragi because uh, we are going to play my favorite character or one of my favorite characters to play as in all of the series, Oesugi Kenshin. Now, when I first played single Bassa to Heroes, he was the first character that I played, that I picked and the uh, on conquest mode because uh, i've said it before um i'm a big uh Wesley kenshin fan and hello my pp is single <laughs> hello your pp what do you mean your pp your profile picture also hello greatest gamer yeah as i was saying um a little interesting fact both my first characters in both single basara and samurai warriors was Wesley kenshin so, but I, I became, like, I had a liking when I first played Wesley Kenshin in my pa- Okay. Uh, whatever. Uh, I had a, uh, I grew a liking to, uh, yeah, hello, greatest gamer. I've grown a liking to Kenshin and Sengu Basara because of his, you know, katana quick draw style. And uh, he's basically, if you've been uh, watching on the content from my channel he's basically ice virgil so you have two virgil like characters in this game the first one is kenshin the second one is mitsunari mitsunari is more of a virgil character than kenshin but regardless uh, but nevertheless kenshin has uh, some of those virgil moves from devil may cry so yeah um another interesting fact that you might not know is that kenshin's voice actor is uh park Romi who also voiced Hitsugaya Toshiro in Bleach. So, so it's uh, it's quite interesting that uh, the same voice actors voice two Dragon Ice boys, right? One is Kenshin, one is Toshiro in uh, Bleach. So, you know what? Anyways, without further ado, I've been in the intro for too long. Let's get started. As I said, uh, as I... Uh, you know the drill, guys. We are going to break down Kenshin's moveset first. Then we are going to complete his campaign. So without further ado, let's get started. Now he only has two, uh, two story routes, normal route and drama route. He does not have an anime route. Only nine characters in this roster have an anime route. So here we go. We're gonna play uh, the hardest difficulty, Tenkai. ただ軍神たる務め果たすのみ。美しき剣。で where do we start? Um, Mogami, Shimazu, Kobekawa. Let's start with uh, Mount Sawa. Google Mesh Team is reliving rent free in my head. Hello, Mura. Yeah. It's a banger, alright. <coughs> okay. <coughs> so I want to go with his weapons and costumes. So, by default, second character is Kasuga, his personal ninja. So I have his fourth weapon as the Devil Lurk. I have his fourth weapon as his ultimate weapon. So this is uh, first weapon, main weapon, second weapon. Third weapon, fourth weapon, his joke weapon, which is a, a goose. The recolored first weapon and the gold weapon. I'm gonna start with the base weapon, like always. Same goes with Kasuga. Kasuga's gonna start with her base weapon. 
Now we go. We're going. Uh, now we go over the costumes for both Kenshin and Kasuga. Unfortunately, Kenshin does not have any DLC outfits, which is just a shame. So this is his primary, primary outfit. Goose gameplay. Yeah, we got the goose gameplay after this. Okay, no worries. <coughs> I'll give you what you want. And this is the second outfit. I, I don't really like this outfit. Um, it's it's uh, it's just there. I actually prefer his Basar to Heroes alternate outfit a lot more than this. And the third outfit, which is the first outfit with feathers. She's basically a showgirl from Las Vegas now. So we're gonna use the default outfit. Kasuga has four outfits, which she has a DLC outfit. First outfit, second outfit. Now this outfit I feel like for Kasuga is a lot better than his than her default outfit. Third outfit, it's her default first outfit with glasses on. Now she looks even more like Bayonetta. And Street Fighter. Should Lee, but blonde. Lovely here. So we're gonna use her default outfit. Okay. Let's start the stage. Mighty Mashu. I want to make sure there are no audio delays. Okay, uh, there are no- uh, are there any audio delays? Uh, I just checked the- uh, I just checked uh, on my phone. There, looks like there are no audio delays. If there are none, let's get started. So, okay. As usual, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> As usual, ladies and gentlemen. Kenshin has a normal attack and nine special attacks. Now, Kenshin has eight strings of normal attacks. So let's do his normal attacks first with the square button. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Very simple. Let's try this again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right. Uh, this is his aerial normal attack. Yeah, just a, re uh, just a single slash. Now, let's go to his first special attack, the triangle. So if you press triangle with Kenshin... Yeah, he does the fast draw. Let's do that again. Now, this, you can extend the number of slashes by repeatedly pressing the square button. Yeah, let's do that again. This is a very good uh, combo extender. Alright. Now, if you uh, do a jump charge or X triangle, you get this. Yeah, a ground pound like everyone else. A typical Summer Wars move. Now, let's go to his second charge attack. Oh, not charge attack. Second special attack. The front triangle. He will do a quick slash. Or like a quick thrust. Observe. You see that? Let's do that again. Front triangle. Okay. Now, you can extend the front triangle by... Uh, by pressing the triangle again. So you have a double thrust like this. Let's do that again. One, two, three. Yeah, you can do it three times, not just two. Okay, uh, let's do it one more. One, two, three. Now, the most interesting thing about that thrust, you can use that uh, as a, like, you can combo the triangle and front triangle. So the multi-slash with the thrust, you can combo that. So if you do a triangle, right, and then repeatedly tap square, then you can uh, connect that with the front triangle. I'll, I'll give an example. So triangle, square, 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 and then front triangle, set, set, set. Okay, let's do that again. This is probably my favorite combo. So, one, two, three, da, 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 da. one, two, three. 
Kenshin is a very quick character, and he's also a glass cannon, as in, like, he attacks really strong, but he can, like, uh, he can, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, he can take a lot of damage from enemies as well. Alright, so, let's go to the, uh, hold square button, the third special attack. So if you hold the square button, hold the normal attack, he does a shockwave, which... By the way, every move, or like, most of his moves are cancelable. So if you do this... Oh, that, that, that didn't connect well, so I'm trying to uh, do this. Let's say you do a normal attack. Goes to a triangle. Square, 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 square. Front triangle. Then square. Yeah. Um, one of the biggest strengths of Sengu Basada 4 Sumeragi is cancel animation. Basically... Why I keep saying this game has better combos than Dynasty Wars is because every move, like you can, you can mix up different moves from uh, different attacks of every character. So, like I said, in Dynasty or Summer Wars, most of the combos are square, square, triangle, square, triangle. Either a chain of square attacks or a chain of square ends with a triangle or just a chain of triangle. I like to say it's a fixed end combos. While in Sengoku Basara 4 Sumeragi, the combos are not fixed end. You can, it's not just square, 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 or square, square, triangle. You can do square, square, triangle, square, 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 front triangle, hold square, and then R1. Basically, the amount of combinations of moves you can do in Sengoku Basara 4 Sumeragi is a lot. Very, uh, very. And it also helps that this game has cancel animation. So, again, we finished the third. Special attack. Now we go to the fourth special attack, the R1. So his R1 is a is a big ice attack like this. And you can do that move in the air. See? Which this is my favorite. Hello Saiyan. Yeah, this is my favorite character too. So I'm gonna use a combo from no okay, I'm gonna I'm going to chain combo from normal attacks to the triangle to front triangle and then R1. So here we go. Square, triangle, square, 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 front triangle, R1. Let's do that again. One, two, three, four, triangle, square, 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 one, two, R1. Right. Now that's the R1 combo. Now, uh, sorry, not the R1 combo, the R1 special. Now let's go to his block specials. L1 triangle and L1 L1 square. Now let's go to L1 square. Sorry, L1 triangle first. This is L1 triangle. Now this is a counter move, right? However, this can be an offensive move if you are in ice mode. Now, in order for you to like, I will call it ice mode. Okay, I will call it uh, ice mode. Basically, when you connect this move and this to your enemies. You go into quick ice mode, and then the L1 triangle will be an offensive uh, will be an offense instead of a defense. So yeah, this only works if someone attacks you. It's a parry move. So now let's go to it's wrong. Let's go to the L1 square. L1 square for Kenshin is a launcher like this. You can combo that. So L1 square and then R1. L1, so you can do multiple different combos with L1 square. So either L1 square, square, yeah, L1 square, R1, or L1 square, go to a triangle. Right, uh, like I said, now the launcher, L1 square, can be done in the air, but you'll have a different move if you press L1 square on the air, like this. Yeah, it becomes a, I will call it a quick draw. So. You can combo, okay, you can combo the L1 square on the ground with the L1 square on the air. So, L1 square, and then L1 square again. You see that? So, let me try this again. So, let's try, uh, let's try a combo using the normal attacks. Uh, chain with the triangle, and then L1 square. So, normal, triangle, square, 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 L1 square, L1 square. Okay, so now we go to the R2 attacks. His first R2, I like to call this move the speed run. So what it what it does is this: you press R2, he runs fast, and then when you run like this, you press the square button. 
Yeah, he does uh, like single slashes, but very lethal. And if you press triangle, you move to the front triangle like this. So basically, okay, this move you can either cancel with a triangle. Okay, sorry. This move you can cancel with any move. So let's say I, I use the run, then I press triangle. See? Or when I run, I press front triangle, I get this. Set, set, set. Or when you run, you press R1. Yeah, that, uh, if you uh, perform the run and then press R2, you'll stop the move like this. Okay, so now let's go to his second R2. Now, the second R2 is a timing-based move, or like you have to press square in a certain, like in a certain period when the move stops. It's kind of like the third R2 for Shingen. So what this does is he basically create a flower of ice. So let's try this, R2. Now, if you just press R2, he'll do that. But <clears throat> if you press R, if you press square at the right moment five times, he will uh, he will create a flower. Okay, that's just three. Let's try this again. Yeah, and to me, I, I always have trouble connecting the uh, time-based move. Uh, yeah, I, we're not gonna spend too much time on that. Uh, that was my bad. Now, his final R2 is a blizzard. This instantly frees your enemy. Every enemy is on screen. They will freeze with this move. Okay, so now, with that all the way, let's get started. Now, because we have enemies on the front, I'm going to show you the ice mode with this move, L1 Triangle, and what it does. So, we find enemies. Now you see the screen covered in ice, right? Before it breaks. Now when you, when the screen covers in ice, quickly press L1 Triangle, and then there you go, you have the offensive move. All right, I think that's it for the character breakdown. Let's get started. Kenshin is just really, really good in this game. There's a reason why he's my favorite character. Yeah, I like to use the sprint move or the running move. セオ向けたものから主を見捨てた。こいつであの門を腰開けてやりましょうぞ。状況開始。あ、レッツ。レッツ。レッツ。レッツ。レッツ。レッツ。レッツ。レッツ。レッツ。レッツ。レッツ。
Hello, Bang. Your imagination. Hello. Welcome. Ah. Or I like to joke his name Gojo Sakon. <laughs> Gojo versus Toshiro. <laughs> the only thing missing from Kenshin, because his nickname is the Dragon of Echigo, right? The only thing missing from Kenshin, in my opinion, is him screaming Hyorin Maru. Ah, see? That's a parry attack. Jamet her. I mean, he's still cool, by the way. Sakura is still cool. Uh, Kasuga. Everybody's favorite ninja girl, right? Everybody loves Kasuga. Am I right or am I right? Uh, I do like this move. Do your basara, Kasuga. Oh, uh, your Kasuga lebih hot than Fusi Jadu? Kamu belum lihat jusa Kasuga yang ini, berarti. Hey, this is. Wait, I want to show you guys Kasuga's third R2 attack. So, come here. Wait, hold on. I need more enemies. Okay, do your thing, Kasuga. Ah, I feel. Let's do it again. Ah, damn it. Ah! Fail timing. Just let me dance! I just want to dance! Please! Give me the pole dance! Ah, there you go. That's the flower. Well, almost. Let's do this again. Come here, pass ulti. Uh huh. Wait, wait, wait. Let's do this. Ah. Why can't I time it perfectly? Goddamn. I just want to dance! This is my combo for Kasuga and Kenshin. Ah, damn it! I, uh, Come here, you horny fucks! Wait, let me turn off the Discord notification. Some moneta. Yeah, okay. Let's do it again. I, I wanna I wanna show you this mini spec since you're here.
Why can't I time? God damn! Just let me time it. Just let me time it perfectly, please. I know this is a Kenshin episode, but I, I want to give you guys something with this Kasuga, okay? Yeah, basically, her third R2 is a pole dance. UK, <laughs> UK! You! How dare you interrupt my pole dance? Sit down, boys. So, whenever you do this move with Kasuga, what it, the enemy will throw money at you. Who shot that fucker? Please, just let me connect this move for once. There you go. Okay, uh, I just want to show that. <laughs> Sorry. I just want to show that move. Back to Kenshin. I spent five minutes or even more just to show the pole dance move. God damn. Hey, Smiley! Just the person I'm looking for. Hope he's all been good. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I uh, still have this cold, but I'm playing Masa, so I'm feeling a lot better. Playing my favorite character right now. I was talking about combos in Sego Basara right now. Um, I was uh, describing the moveset earlier, but I want to show some of his moveset when, once, I dip, once I beat this boss. Hup, hup, hup. Yeah, this is the best Basara game. I even put this as the best Muso like game. Or second. Uh, the first one would be Orochi 3. Yeah, it is. So, okay. One of the reasons, like I said, uh, why I really like this game is the amount of combos you can do. Like, whatever it's di uh, usual when it comes to Dynasty or Summer is, your combos are fixed end. Whether it's a chain of square attacks. A chain of square ends with a triangle or just triangle in general so i'm gonna show you this with kenshin uh in this game I, as if you want uh when when i'm done with the stream you can check the first part of the stream but i do want to show you this in basara 4 you have normal tax and nine special attacks for each character right and for kenshin specifically all of his or most of his attacks are cancelable like for example love kenshin yeah same 
So... Okay, so this is his normal attack, right? An 8 chain. Also, Hello Cyrus. Now, I want to show you this combo that you can do. So, normal attacks, square, square, square. Then triangle, repeated press square, tri front triangle, front triangle, R2. Uh, sorry, R1. Okay, let me do that again. Um, one of his combos that you can do. Normal attacks, special, triangle, square, 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 front triangle, front triangle, front triangle, R1. Or you can do this. So this is his first R2. It's a quick run. Which you can cancel with any uh, special attacks that you want. Like, for example, if you want to cancel this run with a front triangle, you can do that. Or if you want to cancel this move with a normal triangle, you can do it as well. Yeah, basically, like, I can be here all day just talking about the amount of combos you can do with Kenshin. And this is his uh, second character, Kasuga. One move I love from Kasuga. Okay, I'm gonna show you this move again. So we're not breaking... Exactly, these combos make Dynasty Warriors look like toddler game. And that is not an insult. That's, a, that's just a fact of life. And here's the thing. Kasuga's third uh, R2. I want to show you. This is his th uh, third R2 special. We're not breaking down Kasuga. We're, this is a Kenshin episode, but she's a second character, regardless. I want to tell you the combination of moves so you don't get crushed, but I feel like you'll get a headache reading it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Capcom was ahead of their time with these. If they release, if they release in the West uh, on PS4 English, they would have sold well to focus on future game. I guess same with Koei, maybe. Um, I feel like one of the reasons Basa didn't do well in the West is Devil Kings. I feel like Capcom kind of fucked up Basara in the West with the release of Devil Kings. Could have been special, but it is what it is. Regardless, uh, the fact remains Basara has better combat than Dynasty Warriors or Samurai Warriors. Now, I consider Basara 4 Samurai as the best Basara game, however, it's not perfect, right? There are some parts I don't like in Basa Force Maragi. For example, this game only has two modes. The main story campaign, right? The Sengoku mode, the main campaign, and free mode. And that's it. There's no other, like, side modes. A complementary side modes, like survival mode versus mode. It's just the campaign mode and free mode. And some of the stages in this game are gimmick stages. Like, when you play this game and you encounter some of the stages, you could you would definitely realize that this sta uh, certain stages could be its own mode. Like the, the Takeda Dojo stage. That stage alone can be a survival mode stage, like in Basar 2. Or tournament mode stage. And also, hello, Dinner Dynasty Warrior. Dinner Steel Warrior. Also, hello, Orochi. Uh, Yeah, exactly. DMC uh, did so well with the combat to the point where, I mean, again, the producer of Sengoku Basara was the producer of the first De Devil May Cry game. So it only makes sense uh, to implement, it only makes sense that Capcom implemented Devil May Cry style combat in uh, Sengoku Basara. I mean, some of the moves in Basara 4 Sumeragi were ta taken straight out of De uh, from Devil May Cry 4. And in fact, here's another one. I, I, I actually watched a video that some moves in Devil May Cry 5 were, were taken from Basara 4 Sumeragi. Oh, best character in the world? Oh, absolutely. I, I, I'm not, I'm not going like, to... I'm not going to disagree with you there. Though I like uh, my favorite character outside of Kenshin is Kojuro. Kojuro is my number one. Then Kenshin is my number two. 
But yeah, if anyone said Kenshin is the best character in Basara, I will not be complaining. This is the way to play a Zoom course version of uh, it's, it's cool in Summer War, but moveset is myth. Um, I kind of like Kenshin's my first character to play as in Summer Warriors, by the way. Like, my very first character to play in Summer Warriors in general was Kenshin. I, I like his uh, move in Summer Warriors, but yeah. His move compared to Basara? Sorry, Basara wins. And this is coming from a hardcore Dynasty Warrior Summer Warriors mark like me. Maybe I do a top, um, because I was thinking, um, August and September will be my fourth anniversary of this channel. I'm thinking what video I want, I might do for an anniversary video. Maybe I do a top 15 Muso games? And I will include non koei games as well. Maybe, we'll see about that. Also, uh, Smiley, you're, you're, uh, you're making a video, right? Uh, I saw your community post, you're making a video in, what if, uh, about the Dynasty Wars reboot, if I'm not mistaken? Mystic Heroes. All versions of Hack and Slash. <coughs> well, here's the thing about Hack and Slash. Um, to me, Muso games are like a sub-genre of Hack and Slash that I categorize it's, uh, I... I... categorize it in its own thing. Uh, Mitsunari. Two Virgil-like characters battling each other. Nice Heroes Classic Collection. Oh, Mystic Hero Slap. Yeah, I think that's the only Warriors game from Koei with four players. Right, that was quick. I mean, that could work, um, Smiley. I'm actually, here's the thing, I'm actually surprised Koei never did that. Like, you know, in PS3, Capcom did a Basara collection, so HD collection of Basara 1, 2, and 2 heroes. I'm actually quite surprised that Koei never did an HD collection. Okay, who do we got? Yeah, Shimazu. <laughs> Dynasty Tactics 3. I talk, I talk too fast, am I? I? I'm in some mood. Like, I'm having a cold yet, I can still talk fast. Damn it. Well, only time will tell, Smiley. Um, if uh, Romance of the Three Kingdom 8 is uh, had a remake, maybe there's a chance Koei would remake... Um, would we make any of the Dynasty Warriors games? Only time will tell. Okay. <laughs> oh, our, our TK11 is my favorite, by the way. Yeah, yeah, the PS3 had Summer Warriors 2 Extreme Legends and Empires HD. Which, uh, for the Empires version, 
Yeah, unfortunately, it's a Japanese exclusive. For the uh, PS3 Cyber Wars 2 Empires HD version, they actually imported character create uh, like character creations from Summer Wars 3. With games, don't get me wrong, Dynasty Wars wouldn't even be a thing without our TK. Yeah, exactly. Same goes with Summer Warriors, wouldn't be a thing without both Dynasty Warriors and um, Nobunaga's Ambition. I mean, Basara wouldn't be a thing without Dynasty Warriors. I Like, alright. Uh, like, everything is inspired by something at the end of the day. But... Certain objective, like certain uh, object, uh, certain facts just cannot be, uh, like, cannot be disputed. Like, for example, Basara has better combat, as in, like, Basara has more in depth combat than uh, at least Basara 4. Okay, Basara 4 Samurai has the most in depth combat compared to any Dynasty or Samurai Warriors. That's not me hating on Dynasty or Samurai Warriors, that's just a fact at this point. <laughs> Oh, really? I didn't know. Did they remake? Uh, did they make Extreme Legends characters playable? Now, this is the weirdest part. I okay. I I vaguely remembered Summer Wars 2 Empires HD, but what I kind of remembered is that the Summer Wars 2 Extreme Legends characters did not appear in Summer Wars 2 HD Empire, Empires HD. Again, I don't know why. Again, as far as I read, they're not in the Empires version. Which is kind of weird, it's like, Koei had the effort to put Samurai Warriors 3 character creations in Samurai Warriors 2 Empires HD. Why can't they uh, put the Samurai Warriors 2 Extreme Legends characters in Samurai Warriors 2 Empires HD? Like, it's literally, like, they can put something from a, uh, you know, from a different entry, but not from the same entry. It's, you know, it's Koei being Koei, I guess. Did they use the combat engine from uh, two from Summer Wars three and uh, for the Summer Wars two collection? Thought Chris Gillard mentioned that when he even yeah I, I think so like again, um, the combat engine. What do you mean combat engine? Is it like I play Summer Wars two Extreme Legend HD? It's it's basically it plays like Summer Wars two uh, regular Summer Wars two Extreme Legends on the PS two, except the you know except the visuals are better and they use the Dynasty Warriors seven. Graphics engine, I do believe, for Summer Wars 2 Extreme Legends HD. But in terms of combat, the combat is actually better than Summer Wars 3. Like, Summer Wars 3 combat is absolutely clunky. At least the Wii version. The PS3 version is slightly is better, but it's still clunky compared to Summer Wars 2 in general. Yeah, uh, it's either Summer Wars 3Z graphic engines or Dynasty Warriors 7, because to me, it looked more like Dynasty Warriors 7, because that port that the PS3 version of Summer Wars 2 came after Dynasty War 7. It's on Extreme Legends came out after Empires in Summer Wars 2, yeah. Right? My you know, sometimes when I revisit my streams, uh, I speak so fast, I don't even know what I was talking about when I when I rewatch the streams, like, god damn it, what am I talking about? I, I talk like verbose nonsense sometimes. My apologies. Yes, Miley, that's why emulators exist. Yeah, we're gonna fight now, Tora. Uh, for those of you who play Summer Wars 4, have you played now, Tora? I'm just saying here, Basara now, Tora is better. Summer Wars 4 now is fun, but I don't like the way her character is portrayed in that game. Facts, so. <laughs> I have Summer Wars 4 DX for Switch, need to mod my PS3 and 4. I don't know how to mod consoles, unfortunately. <laughs> I know they are girls, but you can't resist this. 
Oops. Got distracted there. Yeah, even female soldiers can resist Kasuga's pole dance. I can kind of help. Ah, yeah, there, me so I can help. <laughs> Flower of ice. Freeze. Oh, I forgot to switch weapons, I forgot. Uh, I'm gonna use his joke weapon after this, because if you're still Himura, you want a goose fight, I'll give you a goose fight. Heavenly Guardian. Um, oh, what videos I'm working on? I'm working on Inuyasha Feudal Fairy Tale. Uh, that's the one uh, video project I want to do before I go to Sego Basara too. Hello, Kurokaze Hartoyo. Selamat Hari Raya Idul Fitri juga. Happy Eid Mubarak. Pocky and oh, Heavenly Guardian is a spiritual successor to Pocky and Rocky. Nice. Uh, bang, coba run R1 square. Okay, let's try. Run R1. Oh, R1 square. Ah, uh, yeah. Baca susah. Sayang. Chaos Wars. Nice. Um, if I. <coughs> If I if I feel like it, there is one uh, somewhere worse video I want to talk. I want to discuss. It's in regards to people wanting the Korean campaign of Hideyoshi being in somewhere worse, which I don't think it will never happen. Sorry, I don't think it will ever happen. The Korean wars or Hideyoshi's Korean campaign. This game has really funny English dialogue. Yeah, in uh, Samurai Heroes, right? Man, I need, I need to learn how to speak slower. I'm getting so hyped up right now. Oh, hell no. Yep. 
Because I keep hearing that from the Koei community saying, Oh, Summer Warriors needs to have the Hideyoshi's campaign in Korea. I was one of the I was, I was one of the people who wanted that, but after doing a lot of reading, yeah, I don't think Koei is going to risk putting that in Summer Warriors. No Korean Wars, yeah, yeah, absolutely not. And I'm not saying this because uh, I just don't want to have it, but there's a good reason why Koei is not going to put that in the game. It's mainly a political reason. Lari. Okay, run. Oh yeah, this one, right? I think... Kotak tahan. Oh. Oh, sambil itu ya. Okay. Okay, let's try this again. Well, I'll discuss it later. So this. That will be a great topic. Yeah. Um, I actually discussed that in my Shingen stream. Why I don't think the Korean campaign will ever be adapted in Samurai Warriors. But I will explain it again in this stream once I'm done with the stage. Because here's the thing, Smiley. I, I, I've seen one comment in your video. <laughs> You're talking fast because the combos are fast? I guess so. Kenshin is affecting the way I speak. Because there was this one comment I saw in your stream. Uh, not stream. I saw in your latest video the uh, what if uh, Dynasty Warriors is being rebooted like Summer Wars 5. The, your, your last uh, video, right? So there was, there was this one comment where he mentioned that Summer Warriors should cover the Hideyoshi, uh, Hideyoshi's Korean campaign. And judging from me Spag's reaction in the live chat, I'm sure he knows why it will never be covered. Alright, uh, let me finish Naotora first. Mongolian warriors? Yeah, I'm not sure about that as well. Uh, well, that part is just because I, I'm not too familiar with the history. Alright, now Tora. Yeah, now Tora in uh, Basara. <coughs> okay, yeah, let me finish now Tora here. The superior version of Naotora. Hello, very well. Ada perampok di rumah, tapi perampoknya deket din. Ding. Aku yang udah hafal combo FD Fox. Hello, very well. Welcome to the stream. A lot of unhinged un comment in that video. It is what it is at the end of the day. I mean, it's part of uh, it's it's part of being a content creator in YouTube. You're gonna meet people like that. <laughs> You're a Steve Fox player? Very well. I'm a uh, Li Chao Lan main. I can abuse someone when they're on, you know, when they're on the wall with Li Chao Lan. Just like Steve Fox.
All right, I'll I'll, I'll tell you why. Uh, when I use Kenshin, I rarely use basic attacks. I'll tell you why. It's a controversial topic. Okay, let's see. Let's take out Kobayakawa. Okay, um... Right, so... Because if we're in this topic, I want to discuss the, a little bit again about why I don't think Koei is going to put the Korean campaign in somewhere worse, uh, if you're still here, Midi Spag. Yeah, so it all comes down to their history. Now, the first thing I want to point out is that how many of you are aware with the gaming world in the 90s? Now, why do I bring up the gaming world in the 90s? Because it's, releva it's relevant to what I'm about to discuss. Now, back in the 90s, right? Back in the 90s, there was this policy in, I think it would, like, I think it, uh, it also, before the 90s, there was this policy in South Korea where Japanese media that is being aired, uh, Japanese, any Japanese media being aired in South Korea must not show any samurai figures or any form of samurai must not be shown in South Korea. Now, although Japan and South Korea's relationship has gotten better, but there are limits to what and what they can and cannot do. Okay, so in the 90s, like I said, samurai, any form of samurai in Japanese media were censored in South Korea. They, they must not allow any like publication of samurai figures in movies, video games, anime, whatever in South Korea, because it's, it's a banned thing. Now, I give one example. How many of you have played Soul Edge before? Yeah, or Soul Calibur. You know Soul Calibur, right? Now, before there was Soul Calibur, there was... Exactly. Uh, before there was Soul Calibur, there was Soul Blade or Soul Edge. Now, Soul Blade for the arcade has nine characters. And one of the, you know, one of the main characters of Soul Blade was Mitsuru, a samurai character, right? From Japan. Now, when that game came out in Korea, because Korea has a strict policy of uh, censoring samurai characters, Mitsurugi was eliminated. You don't have Mitsurugi in the Korean version of Soul Blade. However, Bandai, or not Bandai, Namco, Namco replaced Mitsurugi with a South Korean character, with a Korean character named Huang. So that's why if you ever played the PlayStation 1 version of Soul Blade, Huang and Mitsurugi are identical characters. They're cloned to one another because Huang was a replacement of Mitsurugi in the South Korean version. Then when the game came out uh, worldwide, internationally, they put both Mitsurugi and Huang for the PlayStation 1. Now, for Soul Calibur in, uh, on South Korea, you still have Mitsurugi, but Mitsurugi, now, the, it was during the early 2000s. Uh, the depiction of samurai in South Korea was a little bit more lenient. You can't, like, there are, you know, there are sly ways you could put samurai characters in South Korea. So what do Namco, what did Namco do? For Mitsurugi, he paid, he died, uh, they, they give Mitsurugi a blonde hair and an eye patch as if he was a different character. So he's just Mitsurugi with blonde hair and eye patch and they named him Arthur. So he's not a fully Japanese samurai. He's a, you know, he's a European dressing up at some, as a samurai so that the game can be launched in South Korea. So, and it is not just video games. The, uh, certain episodes of Pokemon, like season one of Pokemon, were not able to air in South Korea because they showed Samurai. And even um, Tokusatsu, like Power Rangers Samurai, uh, even like in the late 2000s or early 2010s, Power Rangers Samurai, uh, it was like, well, it was an American media based on a Japanese media, right? Power Ranger Samurai was not able to air uh, in uh, in was it in South Korea because from what I've gathered, um, South Korea doesn't like the fact that samurai characters are portrayed as heroes. Be now, why is it that South Korea has a 
strict regulation. Why is it that South Korea has a strict regulation or strict uh, censorship towards samurai in their country? This is mainly because of their past dark history with samurais. There are two instances where South Korea has a, you can consider a trauma with samurai. The first one was during World War I when, when Japan occupied Korea, right? Uh, basically, uh, a lot of uh, South Korean citizens were murdered by samurai or, or you know, J Japanese imperials, something along those lines. And the other one was Hideyoshi's campaign in Korea. Hideyoshi's campaign in Korea is a, you could say is a tragic past for Korea itself. It's something it, like it's a, you know, it's an old wound that it's a very sensitive topic uh, for Korea. Now, can you imagine, let's say, can you imagine Koei putting a sensitive topic or putting a tragic history of South Korea in Samurai Warriors where you play mostly as samurai characters, mostly as, you know, as your Hideyoshi, as uh, Takatora, as, as, as the samurai characters that you normally play in Samurai Warriors, then your entire mission is to clean up or is to, you know, kill as many Korean soldiers as possible while shouting truth, justice, honor, righteousness. Do you think that will sit, uh, like, although Samurai Warriors now is available in uh, South Korea, I mean, uh, South Korea has Dynasty and Samurai Warriors, but when it comes to, like I said, their relationship between uh, South Korea and Japan are better, but there are certain things they, they, they are not able to do. Now, do you think they will, do you think South Korea, or Korea in general, South and North, will take that kindly, where you have a game uh, slaughtering Korean soldiers while shouting justice as a samurai? Again, it depicts a tragic and dark past of South Korea, uh, you know, of, of South Korea, and it's something that, because here's the thing, if Koei make, like, Koei can risk political relationship between Japan and South Korea if Koei would go that route. I get it that you have movies and other media depicting Hideyoshi's campaign in Korea, but they were done in the most careful way. They were done in a way that's treated with respect, you can say, uh, in a way that let's try to do this carefully so that we don't uh, offend or we don't piss off the South Korean people or the South Korean government at least. So that's why I don't think the Korean campaign will ever be covered in Samurai Warriors because of that reason. Now, I only thought of this a couple of I actually thought of this a couple of years ago when I remembered how samurai characters were censored in Soul Blade and Soul Calibur and that that that, that actually made me think why was it censored? And then I I finally come to the realization after learning you know after do a lot of reading is that Hideyoshi's campaign in in Korea was a sensitive topic, was part of their dark history, was, was part of their tragic past that Koreans wouldn't want to relive it. You get what I'm saying here, right? Yeah, so that's why. Um, it's always easy for us gamers. It's always easy for us gamers to say, oh, I want this, I want that in a Warriors game. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, but this is why I feel like us gamers should open up our knowledge a little bit more. That's what I'm doing with this channel. Like... Uh, I'm trying, at least, I'm a t whenever I say something, I try, uh, like, whenever I say something, I don't want to say things right off my ass. I need to make sure that I know what I'm talking about. Alright, so you get my idea, right? Wow, this is very interesting stuff. I always knew there was layers to Japanese and South Korean political beef, but this is next level pettiness. Totally understand, though, from both sides, history is messy. Exactly. And here's the thing, another... Uh, when I was doing my re again, I might make a video on that topic because considering the Koei community really, 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 really want to have also hello random black guy. Considering the Koei community really, really, really want to have the South Korean ca like the Korean campaign, uh, the Korean campaign by Hideyoshi, which I again, which it never happened. And honestly, from a gamer's point of view, at least the Korean campaign doesn't really do much for Summer Wars, in my opinion. It's like. It doesn't really add any value, at least for me, for a Samurai Warriors game. That's just me, at least. Um, where was I? Yeah, that's your story. <laughs> um, so I said, yo, yeah, people wanting this don't understand the history whatsoever. They just want Hideyoshi as a protagonist. Yeah, exactly. 
South Korea had a very strict uh, blockade on Japanese products as well. That's why the American NES was released instead of the Famicom. Gua nyimak aja ya. Ya mudah-mudahan kamu ngerti. Okay, so if you're still here, Mura, we're gonna use the joke weapon for uh, Kenshin. We're gonna fight with the goose. And for Kasuga, let's fight with the yo-yo. Um, yeah, I'm gonna use the showgirl outfit for <laughs> Kenshin. And for Kasuga, I'm gonna use the glasses outfit. I mean, we're fighting Kobayakawa, he's also a joke character. Yeah, I'm using the goose as a weapon. Did you hear Matsui? Yes. I hear Matsuyu and Luzu. I told you, emulators are not gonna go away. Uh, taking out emulators is like whack-a-mole. You whack one mole, five more appears. Could have seen it coming. Yeah, I saw it coming immediately. Uh, Shadow Clone. <laughs> Not even Nintendo has anything to say about it. I swear to god, this heart emoji is blocking my way. What are the chances they use Yuzu code base engine if they're in, in their remakes moving forward? Big. Another to That's another interesting topic, by the way, uh, I've been seeing around the internet. Video game companies destroying our games, as in like... Um, you know the debacle between digital and physical games, right? And I've mentioned before, the main issue is not about the form, the main issue is that this is mainly a digital thing, but uh, this, yeah, this is mostly a digital thing. Is that game companies can take away the games that you purchase? Game ownership is the uh, big issue in regards to digital games. Like when you buy a game, sometimes, all right, game companies can take out the server and take away the games that you own. And not just take away the games that you own, like, they take away the games that you own and then make the game unavailable forever while at the same time taking away your money. The money that you used to buy that game. Big bag, take little bag, yeah. And one of the reasons why companies can get away with that as of today or as of late is that 
you uh, there there has been no regulations in regards to you know in regards to digital services or digital goods to make sure that whatever digital goods that you buy belongs to you and i'm not talking about subscriptions i'm talking about like legit digital products like the games that i bought on steam those are not subscription based those are games that i bought to ha to have it as my own and it's always a recurring theme with uh you know with uh regulation is that policy makers or cannot keep up with how fast technology has grown Exactly, exactly, Smiley. Same with physical, sometimes patch download force you to update and physical games totally have the partial game on disc. Exactly. Again, uh, the, the the discussion should not be revolved around, oh, which one is better, physical or digital? No, no, it's that should not be the discussion. This, the discussion should revolve around, if I buy a game, whether it's digital or physical, sorry, whether it's digital or physical, as a customer, as a buyer, I want to make sure that the goods that I buy belongs to me. And no companies, no whatever parties can take that away from me. Because I have spent my hard-earned money to buy the things that I bought. Basically, it's just giant rental server. Exactly! Again, I understand if, let's say, if it's like Xbox, uh, was it Xbox Pass? I forgot, the the the, uh, the Xbox uh, subscription service. Game Pass, right? Xbox Game Pass. I get if it's Xbox Game Pass, like as in like, you pay for a subscription, right? You pay for an entry or you pay for a service where you can play multiple games that Xbox gave you in their library. I understand if uh, they can take away, uh, they can take away uh, your, you know, your experience from the game because you're just paying for the service to access their game. It's kind of like arcades, right? You put a coin, but you put a coin to play the game, but you don't own the game. You're paying for, you know, you're paying for the service. You're paying uh, for the service of playing arcade games. But when it comes to digital stores like Steam, PlayStation uh, Store, Nintendo Store Online, you are paying to own the game. You're not paying to access the game. You're not paying for the service. You are paying for the goods. That's why piracy, this is why... Uh, it's ownership, exactly. That's why piracy is making a huge comeback. And there was, there was this one good line that I've heard. Uh, circulating around the internet you know if buying isn't owning then piracy is not stealing streaming services are already uh, there you don't own anything you watch unless you physically physical media or pirate gaming is next very soon yeah uh, I, I hope that i hope that's not the case you know i hope uh Honestly, we, we still need options. I mean, DVDs are still a thing, right? DVDs and uh, discs are still a thing, at, at least from what I'm concerned. So, I always feel like game, uh, I always feel like us customers should have the option. Like, would you rather buy the game for yourself, or would you use a subscription service uh, for a game? I feel like both options should be uh, available, because... I personally, okay, I when it comes to video games at least, when it comes to video games, I don't really use subscriptions. I per I personally just prefer to have them as my own, because I like to collect. Again, like both streaming, like both services, uh, both uh, video game as a subscription service and buying as a digital good have their benefits. It's just, uh, it's just that us uh, gamers should have the option to choose what benefit we want. Um, movies, again, movies, there are some people, there are, again, there are, there are still DVDs. Uh, I'm not sure, okay, when it comes to movies, are there any, like, digital goods? I'm not talking about streaming services. Are there any, 
uh, any way of owning digital movies or buying digital movies. あなたを愛したい。あなたを慈しみたい。I think there was. ほほえみ合いましょう。寄せ鍋とは好きな動物を入れてこそ初めてそう呼べるのですよ。覚えたての念仏。悪いがあんたで試させてもらうぜ。まどい苦しい。人。<笑><笑> <laughs> Sorry, another reason why I prefer to own my games is that unlike movies, video games are not a one-off deal. Are not a one-off experience. Like when it comes to movies, um When it comes to movies, you watch the movies, right? You engage by watching, by by spending the next two or three hours with the movie, right? And that's it. Yes, you can rewatch the movie again. But you passively engage with the movie, right? You just watch the movie. But with video games, you control uh, the engagement. You are actively engaging in video games. And, like, you can play video games multiple times and it will give you, like, it will not be the same experience or it will not be, uh, you know, it will be a different experience uh, whenever you play, uh, you boot and play the game. It will not be the same experience, like in the movie. Yeah, it's you know what I'm saying. Like I'm trying, I'm, I'm having trouble explaining it, but you got know what I'm saying. That's why uh, for subscriptions in movies, I'm perfectly fine with it. I, I usually use subscriptions uh, for movie services or series services because I'm going to watch a movie. Like again. When it comes to movies, it's not something I will spend an entire week, uh, like three hours a day, to engage. If I'm done watching this movie, I'm gonna watch a different movie until probably the next month or so when I decide to watch the same movie again. For video games, it's different. Let's say I'm playing Sengo Basara, right? I play Sengo Basara today, and I can play Sengo Basara tomorrow and have a diff uh, and have a and have a different experience, right? Me playing Sengo Basara today, it doesn't mean, oh yeah, I'm just I'm done with Sengo Basara, right? No, I'm not done with Sengo Basara. I, I can play another, uh, I can play Sengo Basara tomorrow with a different character, with a different, uh, or maybe the same character, but a different, completely different experience. That's why when it comes to video games, I like to own my games. For movies, I just stream it because I'm not going to visit the same movie for the next, you know, for the next week. I'm not going to watch the same movie every single day in one week. It's not something that I will engage myself in multiple hours. あの<笑><笑> あらゆる<笑> Oh, 
Is it a white Kobayakawa, the joke character? Kenshin using a goose as a weapon. Also, Masara was the first game to introduce joke weapons until Koei introduced them in Dynasty Warrior 7. Tenkai or Mitsuhide. I mean, they're the same people. They're the same person. Kenshi Sama. Kenshi Sama. Gojisinka. Tenkabito Savashikuni. Alright, let's fight uh, Yoshiaki. ランセの渦で飲み輝く。健やかな王様を収める器には Okay. Gonna discard the weapons I don't need. Ashikaがよしてる。秋はただ一つだけ。人の心への寄り添い方さえ知り得たが、それが民のためと思えばこそ、身を引く道を選ばれるのですか、ケシ様。I'll use this outfit, and I'm gonna use Chun-Li's outfit for Kasuga. On second thought, uh, I'll. Ah, you know what? Never mind. I'll use it. How can? Mighty Mashu. Mighty Mashu. Ah! 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 Ah
Wait, uh, Propar, maybe we can do a collab with uh, Top 15 Musou games. Don't want to take your four-year anniversary shine, but should try that in the future. Oh, absolutely. I, I would love to do a collab with other creators. Because um, I haven't done any collab discussions with uh, other creators. I would love to do that with you. Actually, uh had something like that with Chris Gilrad, but we haven't discussed what it is. Again, I am I am open to any collab ideas. Don't worry about it. <笑><笑><笑> This is the gimmick stage. We need to make sure Mogami doesn't drink uh, soda tea or sparkling tea. Hello, me blue. Welcome to the stream. Do you think this stage in the game have interaction with each other if they defeated or ignored? Uh, what do you mean? Well, some stages do have special interactions or uh, special require uh, like secret paths. This one is not one of them. Ah, damn it. Yeah, he goes invincible mode if he's on sparkling tea. Also, 10 viewers, by the way. Thank you guys so much. Make sure he doesn't drink uh, sparkling tea. Ah, I forgot to do the flower combo. Oh, almost. I don't know, but I always get Honoji if I ignore the Tenkai Mitsuhide dual thing. Yeah, it's RNG. For the normal campaign, it's RNG. Unless, uh, unless if you're doing uh, the drama or anime route. Oh, he's high on sparkling water. Basara always works.
I'll brainstorm some topics and I'll let you know. Sure, sure. Spinning butt kick. Not running away from me. の宿。<笑> お、松永。未完の名物。不足の美。実に難解だが。育てがいのあるものだ。独眼流名。帽子を解放した。<笑> Is it Zavi? Is it dual stage? Let's pick my yes stage. Hmm.それはその方を自ら攻めばならぬことなのかな。ヤブレシモノが失う。They're um, matching outfits, so I'll use this. それが人間の断りと言えましょう。しかし、万民がそれを望むわけではありません。ホテルを望む者あらば、逆もまたしかい。この祈りもいずれかの御霊には届きましょう。そうか。参りましょう。参りましょう。姉上、また見境もなく各地の宝を取り寄せたのか。この<笑> favorite character of mine, Nagamasa. まさか姉上の2を狙うぞか。威力、走行。
That's a lot of damage. Welcome. <laughs> the legendary Power Ranger Nagamasa. Yeah. Oh, by the way, in Basar 2, we actually have a Power Ranger character, right? The Gohonyari. <laughs> hey, Vampir, since you're here, I'm gonna give something for you. Look, I'm playing as Kazuga, I'm gonna do this. あ。マリアはい、Hey, best, yep, let's do this again. Woo. Ah, missed again. Why am I so obsessed with her pole dance? Come on, do the pole dance again. Wait. <laughs> ah, a little too early. Ah, 
Well, we're not gonna mess up skill is mostly stylish. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I prefer this costume for Kasuga than her default outfit. Uh, you did it, yes. <coughs> Why does uh, Oichi look like she wants to give you a hug? Spinning bird kick. To <coughs> come back to Nagamasa. Just, just, just 
Jesus. この<笑>私は忘れませんいたばさみのつさ来てんだには決してわかるまいもくろみの甘さ気を見せてくれます一長政さわらわらしばらく献上品をめでるわお客様のお相手よろしく頼むわねお前にもわらわを手にするのはいここまでとはな。素直に分かるのね。少しは我慢してみせて。<笑>俺たちも負けてらんねえぜ Oh yeah, I, I, I know what you're referring to on AEW. It makes the NA back good. Yeah, I, I, I've seen the、uh, footage. I've seen what made AEW last night an awful show. <laughs> well, not last night,、uh, last Tuesday. どこまで恥をさらせば気が済むのだ。許せ、一。I've seen the CM Punk Jack Perry footage. お前様は悪くないわ。悪いな。今こそ示すべきというか。第二、第三と携帯を。Perfect sync, nice. <laughs> it turned the, into late 90, 99 WCW and 2000 WCW now, and Toy Shivani looked like he. So the company he worked for die again. Yeah, I saw Tony Shavani's expression. He was having WCW PTSD. But I will say this, okay? But AEW, people are saying, oh my god, this is、uh, like the end of AEW. This is,、uh, this is like how WCW was back in the day. I feel like that's a little bit overblown. I mean, last show. Uh, last AEW d o m i n a n t was absolutely horrible and cringe, but I don't think it will lead to the、uh, death of AEW. Unless, you know, because it's not a downward spiral, at least for AEW, it's just one terrible show. Because that one, like, two weeks in a row, AEW focused more on getting it up, like, you know, stick.、Uh, AEW, for the last two weeks, was more focused on. Sticking up to CM Punk after that Ariel Hawani interview. That's how, if they, that's how if they lose the ratings against WWE, they will create controversy. Yeah, like the CM Punk Jack Perry footage was just a cheap way for Tony Khan to gain ratings. To get ratings. It got ratings for all the wrong reasons. But next week, yeah, good luck. Again, I don't think AEW is. As bad as people say, like WC, late WCWs. It still had potential. I mean, before before the CM Punk、uh, Ariel Hawani interview, AW was putting on, you know, it was able to put on good matches, good、uh, storylines at least. It's just this, it's just the last two weeks they've been focusing more on 
uh, you know, one getting it up to CM Punk. Uh, okay, before, uh, because you guys watch wrestling, um, I had a discussion in a fighting game server, and most of them are wrestling fans as well. Uh, one of my favorite wrestlers is Edge, Adam Copeland. And I asked, do you think Adam Copeland is going to, because he said in his promo last week, AEW is where he is going to retire. I'm just asking you guys, if you watch wrestling, WWE, AEW, TNA, whatever. Do you think Adam Copeland is going to retire at AEW? I feel like, again, at the end of the day, it's up to Copeland's decision. But if it was up to me, I don't want Adam Copeland to retire at AEW. I think he should retire in WWE as Edge. If the way I would book Edge... Edge's retirement is him winning the World Heavyweight Champion against John Cena. At least for me. His final opponent uh, in his wrestling career should be John Cena. Now, some people say, oh, uh, Edge should retire like Sting uh, in AEW. Uh, I, I, I disagree with that. I disagree with uh, Adam Copeland retiring like Sting in AEW because Sting is not a WWE guy. Sting built his career in WCW and TNA. And most of the people in AEW are, uh, you know, his former colleagues in WCW, like Arn Anderson, uh, Tony Schiavone, those kind of people are in AEW. Sting is more of a WCW and TNA guy, that's why it makes sense for Sting to either retire at AEW or TNA. Now for... Uh, hold on. Sorry, again, I had to get some water. Dah terserah Edge mau pensiun, mau enggak ujungnya balik gulat lagi kagak jadi pensiun. <laughs> ya kebanyakan pegulat gitu. So yeah, Edge has said he's retired twice. He's still wrestling. Yeah, the last, the first time was in WWE. The second time was, you know, with Sheamus saying, "Oh yeah, this is the last time I'm going to be in front of you all in Toronto, Canada." And then what happens next? AEW, right? Exactly, Ric Flair is still wrestling. Dude, Ric Flair, as far as I'm concerned, he had three retirement match. The first one was in WCW, uh, during the late WCW days, he had Ric Flair's retirement match. Then, he, you know, after the death of WCW, he came back to WWE, he had a good run. He had another run in WWE for around six years, until 2008. He had his quote-unquote retirement match with Shawn Michaels. And then less than a year later, what happened? He came back to T he came back wrestling in TNA because he needed money. I mean, he got divorced four times and get married four times. You need those money. And then um, it was uh, it was last year, right? 2023. Ric Flair had a pay per view called Ric Flair's Last Match. And then after that, what happened? Earlier this year, he he didn't wrestle. Like he didn't wrestle a match, but he threw punches to the Young Bucks. You you remember that, right? Earlier this year. Ric Flair tried to fight the Young Bucks, and it looks absolutely disgusting. Yeah, again, if, if I was to book Edge's actual retirement, uh, like actual retirement match, it's in WWE, not in AEW. Also, Jomaru, yeah, welcome. 75 years old. I mean, here's the thing. I don't mind a 75-year-old wrestler. Also, she's one of my favorite waifus, Maria. Again, I like my Ara Ara Mami. Also, um, I don't mind if 
a 75 year old wrestler can move well is it like hasn't lost a beat like sting is 65 but he still moves like he's at least 40. the thing with rick flair is that rick flair like i'm not a, i'm not a big rick flair mark um even back in the day i always prefer other wrestlers than rick flair but i think dutch sting is 64 yeah but he's he moves still well in his 60s that's again it's not about the age it's more about um if you can still perform the way you perform on the ring rick flair to me rick flair should have stopped wrestling after Shawn michaels match in wrestlemania 24. have you seen his matches in tna he looks awful, even back in the t in his TNA days. I think there is a. I, I remember someone said, uh, the only time a wrestler truly retires is when he dies. <laughs> That's what's gonna happen to Ric Flair. He's gonna die in the ring. <laughs> he, he's never going to fully retire until the day he dies. Indeed, I admit that there are already wrestlers who have been involved in wrestling for a long time, and I say they will retire, but in their hearts, there is still a wrestling soul that cannot be lied to. In a way, I kind of uh, appreciate Undertaker uh, in his, you know, Hall of Fame speech. He ended his speech by saying, never say never. Basically hinting, yeah, if, if I have another match, count me in. Alright, final stage, a three-way match, or a three-way fight, a three-way battle between Matsuna, uh, Uesugi, Matsunaga, and uh, Toyotomi. But, but guys, really, you've seen the Ric Flair um, fight with... <laughs> The young bucks, right? Where he doesn't even throw a punch, it's just like a soft jab to I think it was Nick Jackson, like Whoop! and then Matt Jackson tried to low blow Rick Flair and it looks so slow. Hey, hey hello Bucks, welcome. I was just talking about the wrestling. Uh because Meaty's back here. Uh talk about AEW and the, how the last AEW is absolutely dog shit. And hello as well, JK14. Welcome. Welcome, Matthew. It's like, um... CM Punk lived rent-free in Tony Khan's head. And the thing, the problem with the CM Punk Jack Perry footage on last Tuesday's AEW Dynamite is that it didn't do anything for the show. It didn't do anything for the um, Young Bucks FTR feud whatsoever. It's like, I mean, they tried to play it off. Oh yeah, this is important for, you know, uh, for the build-up towards the match between Young Bucks and FTR on the next pay-per-view, which is not. It's just, it's, it's, it's a way for, it's a way for Tony Khan to stick it up to CM Punk after that Ariel Hawani interview. And another thing I, I read online is that one of the reasons why the CM Punk Jack Perry footage uh, was shown was AEW's way to hype up the return of Jack Perry. Which, you know, I'm like, okay, I don't really watch a lot of wrestling. I, I watch a bit of WWE, I watch a bit of AEW, but from what I've seen in AEW, how many of you guys are excited with Jack Perry? Like, the dude, like, from what I've seen from Jack Perry, the guy is a, is an absolute jobber. I don't know why AEW have the need to show the CM Punk footage for the sake of hyping up the return of a jobber.
Oh, yeah, I, I don't know why the... Yeah, sorry. The chat didn't load. Oh, you're talking about CM Punk? I hope AEW comes back from this like AEW. Like Tony Shavaya. Tony Shavani has WCW PTSD. It just looked tacky. I like Jack Perry. I mean, good for you. I mean, Jack Perry has, you know, is a promise up and young, young and upcoming superstar. He got some cool moves. It's just that he's not booked correctly and his attitude is not helping as well. Because I, 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 I watch uh, Bubba Ray's podcast or Bully Ray's podcast. Yeah, Bubba Ray, Bully Ray. And Jack Perry is a cocky dude. He said, like, um, when he uh, discussed the CM Punk Ariel Hawani interview, he said, uh, Jack Perry is a promised star indeed, but he believes CM Punk when he said Jack Perry is a cocky dude. But like Jack Perry is just quite disrespectful towards uh, the seniors or the locker room. <laughs> also, uh, speaking of Bully Ray, am I the only one who thinks Bully Ray or Bubba Ray has a very identical voice with Paul Heyman? Like if I close my eyes, like here's the thing, when I when I uh, listen to Bubba Ray's podcast. I always, like, I often mistake, like, I often uh, thought that I was listening to Paul Heyman. <laughs> yeah, like, the footage, like, the CM Punk Jack Perry footage, uh, was to hype up the pay-per-view, but it, when in reality, um, People are not talking about AEW or the upcoming pay-per-view or how Swerve is going to be the first ever Black World Champion in AEW. No, people are just talking about th that footage and how and, and the negative press that comes after it. Again, what CM Punk did, like I'm not saying I'm not defending CM Punk for what he did. Uh, basically, he put his hand, he put his hands on a co-worker, right? He should have been the bigger man and just let it go. Again, I, I'm not defending CM Punk on that part, but it doesn't make, you know, it doesn't make everyone else look less guilty. Uh, Jack Perry, Tony Khan, again, Tony Khan was mostly to blame because he's, the problem with Tony Khan is that he doesn't act like a leader. He doesn't act like a boss. And honestly, like, um, I, I watched the Ariel Hawani CM Punk interview. Of course, like, that's, um... There's always two sides of the story, right? There's always CM Punk's side of the story, there's always Jack Perry's side of the story, and there's always uh, the AEW side of the story. But the one thing I 100% believe in CM Punk is when he talked about Tony Khan, and how Tony Khan is a nice guy, but he's no leader in the locker room, or he's not a... Uh, he doesn't act like a proper boss towards his co -work or towards his workers. And I'm inclining to believe that, not because I trust the word of CM Punk, it's because... Tony Khan's track record, whenever he's being interviewed, he tends to avoid serious questions. And whenever I see someone, like, whenever Tony Khan avoids serious questions on an interview or on a, you know, conference, it just gives the impression that he's not someone, you know, who is in control of a situation. Again, I'm not saying you have to like CM Punk. I'm not saying you have to like CM Punk. I mean, uh, like CM Punk getting into backstage wall is a CM Punk thing to do. But none of the like, I feel like none of the incident, uh, none of the incident in All In would have happened if Tony Khan uh, acted as a leader. Yeah, Tony Khan should hire someone else to book. I feel like. That could be a good thing. It's, it's the same thing with WWE, right? Uh, you know who uh, the CEO of WWE is? Nick Khan, right? Nick Khan runs the business side of WWE, but when it comes to the wrestling and the, you know, the wrestling side of things, he leave it to Triple H. He leave it to Paul Levesque. I feel like Nick, uh, Tony Khan can do that. Uh, Tony Khan can run the business side of AEW while he has someone else help him with... Uh, to book the show and, you know, to uh, to lead the talent. 
Because A, like again, AEW has potential. And some people claiming that AEW is going down this WCW uh, death route, I, I, I feel like that's a little bit over much. Like, I feel like that's a bit overblown. I don't think AEW is dying like in WC, uh, like how WCW did, blah, like how WCW did in the early 2000s. That's a bit too much. There are still a lot of good things in AEW. It's not in a downward spiral. It's mostly like AEW, like for every five good things AEW does, there's always four bad things AEW does. Tony Khan looks like he, he likes the Coco Snow a little bit too much. Yeah, exactly. That's why I believe when CM Punk said uh, Tony Khan is not a leader, or like Tony Khan is a nice guy, but he's no boss. Again, not because, not because I believe what CM Punk said. It's just because I've seen like track records of Tony Khan when he's on interview. Yeah, I, exactly. I don't think AEW is dying. There is too big of a like. There's too much potential AEW for it to be dying. But a lot of things needs uh, its own life support. Uh, not necessarily. Again. The way I see it is like for every five things AW did good, there are four things AW did bad. But one thing uh, I will agree on if but is that Tony Khan has. Oh fuck! I forgot. Oh no 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 no! I have to restart the stage because I forgot to switch the music so that I would avoid copyright. I you see, I'm too busy talking to you guys. Like. I forgot to do the most important things. Silly me. Tony Khan needs someone else? Uh huh. Well, I mean, Tony Khan can still be the CEO of AEW. Just don't get Vince Russo, absolutely, no, no. No, Vince Russo should not be in a conversation in wrestling whatsoever. Okay? Get away, like, get as far away as Vince Russo, bro. He doesn't need to be booking a wrestling show, bro. Nah, nah. TM Revolution is not, is not copyright free. I wish it was. Uh, get 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 Vince Russo away from the wrestling business, bro. He doesn't need to be booking a wrestling show, bro. All right, we don't want another TNA 2010 incident, bro. Don't get like the only thing that can ruin AEW right now is if Tony Khan decides to hire Vince Russo, Hulk Hogan, and Eric Bischoff. Yeah, at that point, you're just... Why are you doing this? Uh, 
Come on, Hanbi. Alright, here we go. Matsunaga and Hideyoshi. You tried the Berserk uh, Musou game that Sega plays? Not yet. I tried the North Star Musou game. I like it. I wish it's on PC. But then again, I can emulate using uh, the PS3 emulator. Have a good day and uh, uh, stream pro star. All right, Bubs, I'll see you later. You're off for work, I guess. Have a nice day at work. Gotta go get my, gotta get my day started. All right, see you later.
KG is here. Let's finish this match before KG arrives. Alright, that's it. We beat Raul. <laughs> oh, we have to fight KG, dude? Oh no, we don't have to fight KG. つなき者です。終わったな、上杉。はい。ここに至ったのも全てはその方の示唆あってこそだ、上杉よ。足かがこ。この新たな天下をもたらした功績。他ならぬその方に まず褒美を送ろうと思う。上杉謙信よ。甲斐の虎武田信玄を打倒せよ。なんと。それがその方の望みであろう。相手の真に望むところを察する。これはその方より教えられたことなのだぞ。ありがたい。喜んでもらえたようで何よりだ。では、行くがいい、上杉。いや、テルトラよ。王政のままに。Right, we are done with the normal path. Now let's finish his drama route.
美しき釣りおおスキャップうん Oh, we're gonna fight Keiji. The festival stage. I didn't realize I have max money now. Let's go to level 961. <coughs> I want to max um, both Kenshin and Kasuga by the end of the stream. Dora Marau. One of my favorite stages in the game. This is a good stage to grind your character. <laughs> this music is a banger, by the way. Uh, best girl.
それでは上杉殿松宮はこれにて何とぞごゆるりとくつろがれませんガチャ向こうることすらかなわぬこのまま。いたかしか。上杉だ。あとで見返そう。やつぎだぞ。<笑>え？私の策でよろしい。みんな、俺についてきてくれて。ありがとうよ。くれなあの後ろ姿についていくだけで、なんか安心するよな。Tá indo, vai que aí, Gigi. Yeah, this feels like Ichigo fighting uh, Hitsugaya. Man, I love how chaotic this is. There you go, the flower. Got you in my trap. ありがとうな。けど、それは俺だけの頑張りじゃない。え、本が言ってくれたんだ。年とか、お前とかさ、私が。神を導くに足る存在である。当然だろ。天心を知る奴なら、誰に聞いたってそういうよ。確かに将
drama out of Kenshin. <coughs> because it's the final stage, we're going to use the ultimate weapon. One of my favorite music in the game. Let's bring it on. Ah, uh, it'll take out. It'll take him on, Kasuga. お前がそんな顔で戦えるようになるとはな。悪いか。もう一度ご挨拶。ケンシー様と共に<笑> Spinning bird kick. Oh, my God. 
Yukimura is waiting. <coughs> You're not the only one who can pull that, Sukimura. Right, time for one final showdown against Shingen. <coughs> ah, hello Aldi, welcome. Pas udah mau selesai ini. That's the end of Shingen.
この冷たき棺にって安らかに美しき鶴見はっ参りましょう目指すは今日の都二条城軍神としてこの国の主として天下万民を導くためにはい Ooh, okay, that's the end of Kenshin's campaign. <coughs> Have we maxed Kenshin and Kasuga? Oh, almost. <laughs> ah, I can manually max them. <coughs> okay. Alright, let's... Oh, there's no new weapons, okay. Alright, Kenshin is maxed, and now for Kasuga. There you go, Kenshin and Kasuga are both maxed. So, yeah. That concludes the stream for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! I am... Uh, I'm so pumped up early today, tonight, uh, it's actually crazy. With my flu coming back, but I'm still able to pump up, it's it's all because of you guys, alright? I, I had a really, really good conversation tonight with all of you guys, talking about multiple things, from uh, Koei Muso Games, uh, Summer Warriors having the Korean campaign, to AEW Wrestling, and everything. Yeah, it was just a really fun night for me uh, to play this game. Alright, so, I'm gonna call off the night, guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching the stream uh if you haven't subscribed to this channel do subscribe to the channel we we actually reached 10 viewers tonight <laughs> it's amazing thank you guys so much yeah uh you even if you haven't subscribed to the channel do subscribe to the channel it's absolutely free i'm working on an inuyasha feudal fairy tale video b before i go on to discuss deep uh, like having an in-depth discussion of Basara 2 and Basara 2 Heroes. Uh, it's it's going to be a fun time when I'm discussing Basara 2 and Basara 2 Heroes. There are a lot to be discussed in those two games. But before that, I want to cover Inuyasha first. And maybe, maybe, okay? Maybe if I have the, you know, if I'm in the mood of this, uh, making a video about the Korean campaign for Summer Warriors, I'll drop that video. But either way, stay tuned for more content in this channel. Basara stream is still going to continue we are going to complete every single character in basara for sumurage and hopefully max them every single character are going to be maxed in summer and summer warriors in Sego basara for sumurage look forward to that next character i will be playing again we are still using the basara one characters next character will be sasuke sasuke then followed with kasuga okay we've completed chigen and kenshin now we're going to play the ninjas of each respective clans so yeah thank you guys for so thank you guys so much for watching if you haven't subscribed to the channel do subscribe to the channel like the stream if you enjoyed subscribe my second channel as well party people for playthroughs uh if you want to join the community discord is open link to the discord server is in the description below until then ladies and gentlemen have a good friday morning have a good friday night wherever you are i'll see you guys next time